How did a movie I would describe as being a campy sexualized gore fest made for roughly $500,000 that was largely ignored when it was first released go on to not only define the style of an entire studio that is still successful three decades later, spawn a kid-friendly cartoon, numerous stage musicals, three sequels, a toy line and a video game? Let's take a look back at the Toxic Avenger. It is impossible to discuss this movie without going into the backstory of the studio that made it, the B-movie legends that are Troma Entertainment that specialise in micro-budget, campy, sexualised ghostfest films with a massive slice of politically incorrect humour, founded by Lloyd Kaufman and Michael Hertz in 1974 in New York. Kaufman had actually started a film studio prior to Troma in conjunction with Oliver Stone, but when Stone left the company in the 1973 film Schwartz the Brave Detective was a box office bomb, 15th Street Films sank without trace. On forming Trauma Entertainment with Michael Hertz, however, they found initial success with softball teen sex comedies such as Squeeze Play, which was an almost accidental hit in 1979. After that, Kaufman co-produced the much bigger mainstream movie 1980s alternate history sci-fi The Final Countdown, that was little more than a feature-length recruitment ad for the US Navy and had none of the calling cards that would become features of all future trauma films, namely gratuitous nudity, gore and political satire, but was a moderate critical and box office success. Due to the nightmarish production issues he had encountered on the final countdown, Kaufman returned to low budget non-union filmmaking and teen sex comedies with Waitress and The First Turn On, rather than taking the company in a more traditional direction of producing mainstream movies. Do it! Do it! Do it, Melvin, do it! Do it? Okay. <laughs> Which brings us to the Toxic Avenger, whose genesis was in an idea that Kaufman had for setting a horror in an upmarket spa in the mid-1970s called Health Club Horror. Thanks to the oversaturation of the cinema schedule and home video market with teen sex comedies in the early to mid-80s, Kaufman and Hertz decided to go in a different direction by combining horror and comedy. Although this wasn't anything new, Troma would ramp up the violence and sexual gratuity, all whilst throwing in an anti-corporate, anti-political satirical stance. This was to become the Troma brand formula from then on, until this day. The Toxic Avenger is a 1984 American black comedy superhero splatter film, where we follow Melvin, played by Mark Torgel, a health club mop boy who is 98 pounds of pure nerd, until he falls into a vat of toxic waste and becomes Toxy the Toxic Avenger, played by Mitch Cohen. Evildoers will have a lot to lose. The movie was shot in and around New Jersey in 1983 and completed in 1984 with a no-name cast, although Marissa Tomei, the future Oscar winner, was an uncredited health club girl, with several other future stars, including my nemesis J.J. Abrams, getting their start with trauma. The film was set in the fictional town of Tromaville, New Jersey, where many of Troma's future films would also be set. The movie was shot on a budget of $500,000, something that even now, three decades later, Troma continues to use as a budget with Kaufman telling Forbes in 2017, The movies that I write and direct have a budget of around $500,000. For Return to Newcomb High Volume 2, which we are just finishing up and will debut at the Calm Film Festival, fans helped put up some of the money for that and raised $63,000, more than the $50,000 we were hoping for to help finish the movie. Initially, the movie was fairly ignored by audiences, only gaining popularity after a very long midnight run at the Bleecker Street Theatre in New York in 1985. With the movie developing a cult following from then on and going on to gross $800,000 at the box office. Critical response to the movie was mixed, with Keith Phelps from the AV Club being particularly scathing in his opinion, saying, As for the movie itself, it's still a piece of trash, if a marginally entertaining one. It's too self consciously parodic to be good kitsch and too gross to be all that fun. I'd argue all of the above are exactly what make The Toxic Avenger such a brilliant film. I was actually introduced to the world of trauma and Toxic the Toxic Avenger, however, by the 1991 cartoon based on the film 
made specifically for children called the Toxic Crusaders, where Toxie leads a band of mutated superheroes who fight a race of evil aliens intent on polluting the Earth. Kaufman decided to make the cartoon, which is of course a huge deviation from Troma's usual output, to try and cash in on two popular trends of the early 90s. Firstly, the trend of environmentally friendly cartoons aimed at children, such as Captain Planet, because of course who other than Toxie, a man mutated by toxic waste, is more qualified to fight pollution in Tromaville. And secondly, the trend of turning adult oriented movies into children's cartoons such as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Robocop and Swamp Thing, plus many many more, there's hundreds of them from the 90s. The cartoon had a less edgy tone than the original movie, obviously being made for children, but still retained some of Troma's iconic calling cards, including many darker jokes for any adults watching that would go over the heads of any children. Sadly for 8 year old me who loved this show, it only ran for 13 episodes before being cancelled. This being the 90s, there was of course a toy line produced by Playmates, who coincidentally also produced a TMNT toy line too. There were 9 figures and 5 vehicles produced, all had toxic slime capabilities. A number of side-scrolling video games were produced for the NES, Game Boy and Sega Mega Drive, all based on the cartoon and released in 1992. Seeing as they all featured on an episode of the Angry Video Game Nerd, along with Kaufman, it is pretty safe to say they were all awful. Due to the success of the first movie, three sequels were released, all which are sadly fairly forgettable in my opinion. The first two sequels were actually intended to be one film, but after shooting, Kaufman realised he had too much footage and cut them as two films rather than the intended one. Both were released in 1989. The third sequel, released in the year 2000, actually disavows the two original sequels in its opening narration by Stan Lee and states it is in fact the official sequel to the original Toxic Avenger film. A reboot to the franchise is also in the works with them aiming to make it a PG-13 family friendly affair, just like the cartoon. Oh, he doesn't look very good to me. Oh, he's faking it, Julie. He's faking it. Oh, I think he's in trouble. Julie, this guy, if he can't take a joke, he stinks. The Toxic Avenger was probably the first Splatterfest film I ever saw and what started my love affair with B-movies when I was around 11 or 12. And having rewatched it again for the first time in years to do this look back, I can see exactly why. The film is chock full of gross out gore, nudity and over the top dark comedic humour and outrageous characters that keep your eyes glued to the screen for the entire 79 minute runtime. Bozo, especially played by Gary Schneider, is played as if he has downed all of the drugs in the entire state of New Jersey and just chews every piece of scenery he comes into contact with. I remember vividly seeing the infamous scene where he runs over a child riding a bike, then backs up over his head and seeing it explode and being both disgusted and laughing out loud at the absolute absurdity of it all. And I think it is that very moment where I fell in love with these kinds of movies. Due to all the nudity and splatter gore, the film had to be chopped down greatly before release according to Kaufman with him saying, without it no theatre would have touched it, even for a midnight showing. Even after release, various censors chopped the film even further with anywhere from 15 seconds to a barely credible 30 minutes being chopped by the German censor from a 79 minute runtime. But deep down, really deep down, this film has a nugget of real humanity and warmth to it, with two major themes running throughout that satirise the 80s perfectly. Firstly, the fact that beauty is only skin deep with all of the beautiful people being hideous below the surface. Even an old innocent looking woman is in fact a human trafficker. But Toxie, the hideous monster on the outside, is a tender soul who just wants to be loved and fight crime. Secondly, is the parodying of the 80s neglect of the environment in favour of economic growth and the whole greed is good ideology that permeated that decade. As Lloyd Kaufman said in an interview with Vice in 2014, Yeah, we're usually ahead of the time. When we made The Toxic Avenger, nobody talked about the environment, but we would go camping and we'd see all that crap in the middle of a wilderness, because McDonald's wasn't biodegradable in those days. 
the environment wasn't really a mainstream issue then. It is this nugget that both sets it apart from many splatter movies and allowed this low budget B movie very much aimed at adults to break out from being a cult 80s home video hit and go on to create an entire media empire all of its own. The movie is also when stripped of all the nudity and splatter essentially a superhero origin movie parody, way ahead of its time seeing as superhero movies didn't become hugely popular for another two decades. With Toxie dispatching villains in extremely gruesome and inventive ways, including ice cream sundaying them to death, turning them into a pizza, and dry cleaning an old lady. Toxie the Toxic Avenger is actually known throughout the film as The Monster, only being called The Toxic Avenger as part of the closing narration. This was a post-production change after the movie was titled The Toxic Avenger. So that's The Toxic Avenger, the movie that set me down this path of loving low budget movies, launched a small media empire of its own, all whilst being an over the top parody of everything 80s and superhero movies, with a variety of gross out humour and gore, this one comes highly recommended by me. I actually have a schedule again for the next two months of lookbacks. Next month will be cult movies from my childhood month, with Labyrinth, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, Flash Gordon and Little Shop of Horrors. The following month will be Horroween, with Neon Maniacs, Suspiria, the 1977 Dario Argento classic, Phantasm 2 and Event Horizon, all getting lookbacks. So if you want to watch those, please like, comment and subscribe.